Okay, a lot of you have asked about the garden because I've stopped doing garden videos for about a month or so. And that's because everything's dead. <laughs> you know, in Arizona, it gets so hot out. You have two growing seasons. And the first one starts at the end of February, 1st of March. Which you might say, ooh, that's normal. But it st starts getting really hot in May. And Death Valley creeps in in June. So uh, everything dries up and dies. I even tried putting on um, these um, shade cloths and it did prolong it until July, end of July. We were still getting a few tomatoes on. They weren't ripening, they'd get big and then they just stay green. We would have to pluck them and put them in on the windowsill and let them ripe. But here's what's left. <laughs> Not a colada. Now we have this one zucchini that is wanting to hang on, which we're happy about. But look at the base. The base starts all the way over here, right there. And it curls around, curls around, curls around to this guy. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to do. But we've got some neem oil that we're going to spray because we see that there's some bugs. Um, see, there's a bug right there. And then there's a bug right there. <clears throat> so, we need to spray it. I'll get my, my mom was gonna come out and spray this morning. I'll show this to her. So we can pluck them off and then spray the leaves better. Um, what you didn't see, it, I wanted to talk a little bit about is soil preparation because if you can see here this is when we were attempting to try to grow the beans and we weren't getting any real success with them uh, we tried growing sweet peas and we weren't getting nothing would grow uh, the tomatoes did fine zucchini uh, okay but it could have been better yield. The beets did real well. We still have pepper plants that are hanging on that might um, survive through another season. And then the lettuce was inedible because we were trying to grow it during the summer months. So when you grow the lettuce when it's hot out, the lettuce, leaf lettuce, turns real bitter and you can't eat it. So we're going to grow it, uh, attempt to grow it again during the, the fall season, which is end of August through maybe the earlier parts of November. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And the lettuce grows up really quick. It germinates really fast. So you can start eating on that. We'll probably be eating on that first of October. Uh, but again, getting back on topic, when you have soil that looks like that when you're done planting, you can bet that it, some of the nutrients are depleted from it. And one thing that we have to consider is this is a new home build, and we had them create these five um, raised garden beds for us. And who knows? He says, oh, everybody loves the soil mixture that I put in here. But uh, you really don't know unless you test it. So my mom and I, we got together and we tested the soil. We took a little bit of sample of soil from 
both ends of each bed. So there were 10 samples. And we went through, we had a test kit that you can buy that comes with little caps, color-coded capsules. So you could test, okay, what's my pH balance? What's my nitrogen? What's my phosphorus? What's my potassium? And, um, and if you didn't know that, on your bags of fertilizer that you get, and this one's not going to show it. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to show. Oh, there it is. You see those three numbers? The first number is the nitrogen percentage. So when you use this product, you're only getting 2% a very small dosage of nitrogen. What you're really getting is the middle one. That's the phosphorus. Uh, you can use bone meal because it's high for phosphorus. So if your test comes back and says, ooh, you're deficient or you're inadequate, then you can go ahead and read for how big your flower bed is, raised garden bed, which ours is uh, basically three by seven. So we figured it to be 21. Uh, and it can be up to 24 because the size is very 21 to 24 square feet. Um, and then what I did was I went to the internet and used an AI chat and said, okay, I've got so much square footage in my raised garden bed, and it has to be depleted. How much bone mill do I need to add in order to raise the percentage up to where it's adequate for growth? And each one of these raised garden beds that I tested, we were down in the depleted or inadequate the very bottom scale for a lot of things. Uh, nitrogen was okay. Um, that wasn't a big deal. Where our problem was is in your phosphorus. That's that middle number. And then the last number is your potassium level. So bone meal isn't a good source to get your potassium. What they recommend is you use a product called pot ash. And that's focused on increasing your uh, potassium levels. Now your phosphorus and your potassium are important for growth, especially for if you have root vegetables. It helps with uh, root development, sustainability. Your nitrogen is there. It's kind of like your carbohydrate for plants and it energizes it and it gives it, regulates uh, flower growth and um, vegetable production, uh, basically basically, your um, repro rep reproductive um, nutrients. So anyway, we noticed that we were real deficient. What we did was we uh, looked out there and they recommended that we get um, steer manure, which is, this is one bag that I've used. And we bought five bags. So we're gonna put one bag of manure in each one of these beds. Now I've already done the tomato bed this morning. I could have showed you that and I apologize. I might um, add to this video me doing, I'll do the beans next. Um, it's not hard, it's just time consuming. Um, but what I did was I broke down the soil about six inches. Then I came back over it with the bag of manure. And then uh, we determined for the bone mill that we only needed a cup of bone mill, which is uh, half a pound uh, for each garden bed to help raise that up from the level it was. So I sprinkled that over it. You could kind of see some powder there. And um, if we had potash, I was gonna put some potash in it. 
but it's not going to come in the mail until today or tomorrow. Now, I'm not going to plant until tonight because I don't want to transplant the plants in here and have it be too hot during the day. It's going to kill them for sure. So I figured if I plant them towards the evening when the sun goes down, then it has all that night with cooler temperatures to be able to take hold and uh, make me have uh, success. We'll probably put up um, some shade cloth for them too. Uh, at least during these uh, hotter months, uh, September going into a little bit of October for us here. Um, here's what's left of our Swiss chard. So that's holding on. And this is what we have in here for the peppers. Um, here's the plants that we bought. We got a cherry tomato plant, husky, pretty big. That's about two feet, feet and a half. We, and we got two better boys. Why did we get Better Boy? Well, that's just because that's what they had available. <laughs> uh, I think during the spring, springtime you get a better selection. We had beef steaks, which we really loved. They did real well. Um, but they just had Better Boys out there right now. We wanted to get the longer ones, so we got a quick head start since we have a shorter growing season. And then I got an eggplant. And I'm so happy this eggplant was so wilted because it was hot yesterday afternoon. So this fern puts out a lot of shade, so I tucked it back in here before we are uh, ready to plant it. And then we got some basil, cilantro, and flat leaf Italian parsley. Uh, and I think for those, I'm going to put them in that flat or raised garden bed down there. Um, yeah, but if they're doing okay right here for now, I could probably wait a, another weekend before we put soil in there and attempt to do that. I need to get a liner. There's a black liner that deteriorates, so every year you have to buy a new one. And then you can put the soil in there that'll hold the soil so it doesn't, when you water, um, fall through the cracks. Don't want that. So for zucchini, we couldn't find any plants, so we're going to plant seeds. Lettuce, we have seeds. We're going to plant some more uh, beets because the beets did real well. And I don't know if we're going to just plant them there or if we're going to plant them at the end of the tomato bed where we thought um where we tried to grow the sweet peas maybe we'll put some there we're going to try we've got we're going to do experiment with beans we have three or four different types of bean pole beans or bush beans that we want to test and we're going to test them by doing so many here so many there and there and there and we're going to see which ones are more successful for this climate and the time of the time of the year, whether it's the fall growing season or um, spring. So that's going to be another project um, video chapter or whatever you call it, where it's going to be the beans progression and we'll just focus on the beans and that'll be my pro other project for the fall. So um, I hope I haven't bored you all, but that's kind of the beginning. This is the beginning process of our new season, and I wanted to make you a part of it. So hang tight. I try, I'll try to do weekly videos so you can see the process. 
we'll talk about other things as well as we go along. Um, hope to see you real soon in the next video. Take care, everybody. And happy Labor Day.